Hello, I'm Dr. Cameron Hall, and today we're talking about one of the most common ailments that we see in practice, which is numbness or tingling in the arm or hand. Numbness or tingling in the arm or hand can be caused by several different impingements. We're going to go through those individually, first ruling out red flags and then continuing on to some of the more common causes. The first thing, you must rule out red flags, which in this case are going to be cervical impingements, such as nerve root compingement coming out of the foramen, central cord compression, or disc herniation. These can be easily ruled out through the use of orthopedic tests, such as Jackson's. Once you've ruled out the red flags, then we can continue to the more common and easy to fix ailments. So Dr. McCoy here is going to assist me as my anatomical specimen. As we turn him around, the first point we're going to check for is the trapezius muscle itself. If there is an impingement in the trapezius muscle, it will usually cause numbness in the C5 or C6 dermatomes, usually in either the thumb index, sometimes even the middle finger. So in order to test this on patients, it's very simple to apply pressure at the trapezius muscle itself, hold for a few seconds, see if that elicits the symptom that you're wanting. Now, of course, the first step in proper treatment is an accurate diagnosis. You must be able to rule these out or in in order to better help and assist the patient. So the trapezius is our first stop along this chain. The next stop is going to be the teres muscle group as it comes underneath the spine of the scapula itself and around to the shoulder. Now, nerves that come through the scapular foramen can be impinged by the teres muscle group. Oftentimes, this will cause numbness in the ulnar distribution coming down into the pinky and a half of the ring finger. The next stop in this chain is the tricep muscle. Now, the tricep muscle will typically impinge the radial nerve, which can cause numbness or tingling on the upper side of the hand into the first three digits, typically. Now, these two, of course, can be tested again by simply pressing and holding on those areas for several seconds to see if you elicit the correct response. Now, as we turn Dr. McCoy around, there are several other areas that now we can extend to in the arm. And some of these are much easier to rule in or rule out, and you can skip some steps based on the patient's symptoms. For instance, if they are having numbness or tingling in only the thumb or index finger, that may lead you to a certain point on this chain. Or if they're having entire hand numbness, we'll get to that later. A couple other impingement sites. So the cubital tunnel, which comes right around the humeral part here, can go into again the ulnar nerve. Now, as the ulnar nerve goes around this tunnel, if it is impinged, it will cause that numbness or tingling in the pinky and only half of the ring finger. Now also, there can be tunnel of Guillaume syndrome, which as the ulnar nerve comes through the carpal bones, it must go through the tunnel of Guillaume. Now this is not the same thing as carpal tunnel, and again will only appear in the pinky and half of the ring finger. Now, of course, carpal tunnel is a very common one. We'll get to that one in a moment. Also, there's anterior interosseous syndrome and pronator teres syndrome. Pronator teres syndrome and anterior interosseous syndrome are differentials for carpal tunnel and easy to rule in or rule out. So as the median nerve comes through the arm, the pronator teres muscle is right here and responsible for pronation of the arm. So if you do have carpal tunnel-like symptoms, which is numbness or tingling in the first three digits and only half of the ring finger, starting at the wrist, that will rule in carpal tunnel. However, if you have numbness or tingling in that same area and it's above the carpal tunnel, it will either be pronator Terry syndrome or anterior interosseous syndrome. Both may be tested by, again, applying pressure to that point, holding for several seconds, and seeing if you can elicit those symptoms. Anterior interosseous syndrome being the more rare of all three of those, the median nerve is impinged as it comes through the anterior interosseous joint, which makes up the space in between the radius and the ulna. Carpal tunnel, of course, collapse of the carpal tunnel itself causing impingement to the median nerve and the distribution of numbness and tingling that we saw earlier. Now, all of these have very easy treatments. Each one of these issues that we've gone through there are several other aspects you need to be aware of. 
brachial plexus impingements, for instance, and also the oldie but goldie thoracic outlet syndrome. Thoracic outlet syndrome used to be a garbage can diagnosis for any time you had numbness or tingling going into the arm or hand. That has since changed. Thoracic outlet syndrome now is a very clinical diagnosis. And typically you're going to see a decreased space in between the first rib and the clavicle itself, usually causing brachial plexus impingements. Those can again be easily ruled out through compression right over top of the clavicle to see if we can rule those in or rule them out. A very, very common condition that is very commonly overlooked is pectoralis minor syndrome. If you have a patient that comes in the office that complains that their entire hand is numb while sleeping or even their entire arm is numb while sleeping, it's going to be pectoralis minor syndrome. Anytime you hit all of the dermatomes, it cannot be a nerve-related issue on one side. A central cord compression may sometimes show up on both sides if it's bilateral. Again, you'll want to rule that out. However, if it's on one side and they report their entire arm and their entire hand being numb, especially upon sleeping or waking up, it's going to be a compression from the pectoralis minor muscle on the subclavian artery on that side. Very simple test to rule this in or out. Eden's test, have the patient put their arms back as far as possible, look down. If that elicits the numbness and tingling response that you're looking for, bingo you've got the subclavian artery impingement. And that about covers most of the common conditions that will appear with numbness or tingling in the arm or hand. There are other conditions as well, but this series is to highlight the more common and easily treatable aspects.